This is Twit. One of the things that you were talking earlier about um, uh, ad blockers and and tracking protection. And these, it occurs to me, it doesn't occur to me, I'd live with this all the time because I use them all and experimentally for the most part. But um, a, a tracking protection such as Privacy Badger provides, for example, um, or uh, Disconnect or some others, they just look at, they're just basically trying to block tracking, but they're also blocking cookies that do tracking. Ad blockers, some of them just block ads, some of them block tracking. It's kind of confusing. I'm wondering to what extent, and then of course the browsers like Safari and Firefox have their own independent block lists or whatever algorithmic approaches they use, which differ again. And now Google has something coming up and there are lots of browsers. Um, one is Avast, I just started using. Another is um, Epic Tor, of course. And those are ways of avoiding the whole thing if you can but still cookies, some cookies come in. So I'm wondering if you can make better sense than I just did between the distinctions here and how they appear to you. And especially when you have to go off and talk to some of these people, what are they doing? Ad blocking, tracking protection, both, neither, what? Uh, like what I learned uh, speaking to ad blockers, uh, maintainers, the blockless maintainers is that there is, there's no like uh, one rule that applies to them all. It's not like... Uh, they all got together and they say, okay, let us do this. These are the, this is what we aim to block. This is how we decide what to block. This is what we do in this case. This is what we do. There's, there's nothing like that. So, so you have uh, uh, many of them are also individuals. So you would have um, what happened to us recently was that uh, a Mulvad VPN is like an uh, open source VPN that I use myself. Uh, they they start, suddenly started using one block list uh, which has just one maintainer. It's a person person that basically decides what to put, and and that then goes to Mulvad and goes to all all of the users. So basically, there's no like a, a, a like a company you can speak to. There's no like organization that that can kind of communicate to you and say what the whole plan is. Uh, why do they block this? Why do they block that? Why don't they block this? So uh, you have uBlock Origin, which kind of blocks everything. Easy privacy. Uh, you have uh, I think uh, AdBlock. Like the, the original ad blocker, hmm. they 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 have like different options. So you like if you install it, by default it will just block ads, and they will not even block all ads. They will block ads that they think are bad ads, and then they will likely some ads that they think are good, and they don't touch analytics and scripts like that at all. So it really depends on on what you're using. Like same with Safari. Safari. You know they they promote it like oh we're blocking Google Analytics, but they're not actually blocking Google Analytics. They're just blocking certain types of cookies that Google Analytics can place and for how long they can they can store it on your device while you can still you can still count the visitor as normal with Google Analytics even on Safari so um, so there are there are uh, uh, so many different uh, ways of doing this so many different people creating their own block lists so there's really no no like consistency at all in in my conversations with them and you know speaking to 10 different uh, block list maintainers you will probably get 10 different opinions yeah, it, it occurs to me. I mean, I, I have, I juggle lots of these different tools at the same time as at last count, I use, I think, eight or nine different browsers. I've been trying out for various purposes. In some ways, just to keep different cookie jars. I, I may have multiple accounts of the one company. Like I do photography. I've got four accounts with Flickr and I have them all in different browsers. Um, and I mean, it's hard enough for the user. It's It's got to be really hard, not just for the site operator, but for you guys to keep up with this, because you could get kind of submarined by one browser comes along and kind of screws up everything you do. I don't know, are you kind of like hyper vigilant about this or is it just part of the normal operation? Uh, we're pretty relaxed about it. So basically what we, what we, we're very upfront. If you go to, you know, our docs, there's a, a page there about ad blockers and we say it as it is, um, our default script, if you want to use it, uh, use it. That, that is the default. That is the easy one. But know that uh, X percentage of, of uh, you know visitors, depending on, on your how head text savvy they are, what kind of uh, ad blockers they use, they may block the script, and you may have say 10%, 20% less less traffic in your analytics than actually happens on your site. So we say it like that. But then we give uh, we give people an option, and we say it like that. Like if you do care about ad blockers, and if you do want to to kind of count everyone. 
uh, then you have these options. You know, like Google Analytics offers options for that. Uh, pretty much every other analytics tool offers options for that. So we do too, and and we kind of leave it up to up to the, the site owner to decide. It's it's kind of their their property and, and kind of their wish and their kind of uh, they decide on you know do they want to count? Do they care about it at all? Don't they care about you know 10% of people missing from the stats? And we give them options and we make it easy to use if they want to. Uh, there's this proxy option. Uh, there's like an easy Cloudflare worker option that takes like two minutes to set up. Then you run plausible from your own, uh, like a, from your own domain name uh, without needing to self-host, which is kind of a, a much more difficult thing to do. So yeah, we, we're, we're pretty much relaxed about it. It's something uh, early on, like last year, when I first encountered this, because I did not expect this, that you know, plausible will be seen as just kind of similar to Google Analytics, and it will just be blocked by so many containers. I did not expect this. So early on, it was a bit. Uh, it took a while to to get that point of view. Uh, the, the kind of the, there's the, they don't see the difference between they're like any tracker just block everything and any JavaScript, any third party kind of. So, but by now, I think. Uh, we we found this nice approach of being upfront, telling all all our users, all our all our subscribers about how it works, and then leaving it up to them, and allowing them the options uh, to to take the one that fits best for them.